Another thing I wanted to tackle this year was the new line of Vestron video Blu-rays from Lionsgate Home Entertainment, which appears to be, on paper anyway, a great series of discs. Also, they featured numbered spines, which I have a problem resisting. The first disc released was Chopping Mall, a title I've already tackled in both this series and on the BAMFcast. I'll come back later and update that review at a later date, but for now we'll start with the disc marked with a number 2, 1987's Blood Diner. Now, okay, Blood Diner is directed by a lady named Jackie Kong. Jackie Kong directed a movie in 1984 called Night Patrol, which for a long period of time in my life I deemed the worst movie I'd ever seen. Eventually other titles came along and dethroned it, but it's still a putrid mess. I even rewatched it early last year just to be sure, and yep, it's the hottest of garbage and one of the worst comedies I've ever seen. So that being said, I was going to have a huge uphill battle with Blood Diner. But I sat through Vampageddon. I can handle anything. Besides, this is the second entry in a hopefully thriving new line of physical releases. You figure they're going to start with the big guns, you know? Blood Diner is about a pair of criminally insane brothers who've resurrected their dead uncle's brain and are murdering numerous people in Los Angeles in order to resurrect an ancient goddess. That plot synopsis is about the nicest thing I can say about Blood Diner, because it was clear very early that I was not going to like this. It's incredibly low budget, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but so many aspects of the film feel rushed, specifically their performances. When scenes aren't overdubbed all to hell... Maniac grave robbers! And it isn't even Halloween yet! What do you make of it, Mark? Beats me, Chief. Seems like the work of pathological weirdos. Without doubt, you must have stated the deduction to date, my friend. But, but where are the clues? You're forced to watch a group of human beings all making the complete wrong acting choice at every single given moment. Everyone's instincts are 100% wrong and none of the dialogue works. None of it. Not to mention the film is just gross. Violence against women, constant atrocities involving food and food preparation, inappropriate humor at every turn. Nothing about it works for me. The energy level is high, but not in a fun way. Instead, it's more like, we did a bunch of cocaine and are shouting at everything. It's exhausting and unpleasant and soul-crushingly unfunny. Now, if I had a gun to my head and had to say something nice about Blood Diner, I suppose I'd comment that the doo-wop soundtrack is fine, a bit involving a wrestler named Jimmy Hitler is oddly interesting for a moment, and there's a half a minute of naked kung fu that ultimately I can't recommend wholeheartedly because that bit ends so stupidly. Sometimes a completely clueless movie can end up being entertaining. The Room, Birdemic, Samurai Cop, and so on. But Blood Diner is like nails on a chalkboard to me. It has its fans, but I am not one, nor can I ever see myself being one. But of course I'm not done here because I've got all this special edition Blu-ray stuff to tackle. Now, sometimes after watching a plethora of behind the scenes stuff, I can come around a bit on a film. Let me just go ahead and let you know now, nope, that is not happening. Blood Diner started life as a sequel and then later an homage to Herschel Gordon Lewis's Blood Feast. Now, I'm not a fan of Herschel Gordon Lewis's films at all, and so I really should have known there was no chance I was ever going to be on board with Blood Diner. I learned that tidbit in the five-part documentary on the disc, which doesn't flow very well since the participants are all segregated from one another. Instead of telling the story of the production from start to finish, each segment is an isolated interview with specific interview subjects. The second part is an interview with Jackie Kong, who doesn't do many interviews, and she seems like a nice and knowledgeable lady. I just don't agree with any of her choices. Other things I learned along the way is that Blood Diner was written by a vampire, apparently. Also, the leads were originally intended to be played by George the Animal Steel and Michael Berryman. I mean, what? I attempted to listen to Jackie Kong's solo commentary track for the film, but just, no, I can't spend another minute with this. Again, she's nice and knowledgeable, but no. Finally, in the collection of trailers, there's one featuring specifically shot footage of a guy in a restaurant telling us about the film. And that's actually better than the movie itself. Who directed this? I get it, there's definitely an audience for movies like Blood Diner, but it's not me. I know it can be difficult to explain sometimes why certain types of horror movies don't click with you when you call yourself a horror fan, but trust me, there are definitely types I can do without, and Blood Diner is sitting right on top of that pile.